Welcome to my PC. I'm working on my new video, which is going to be an FFT of my voice over Ethernet. And one of the things that came up that I thought I would discuss is this multiply. So I'm multiplying the window with the microphone data. And no matter what I do, I can't get it to infer the sign correctly. So I've specified mic data and window out to both be unsigned. They, I mean signed. There's the signed and there's the signed. But no matter what I do, if it's the, a negative value for the mic data, it doesn't come out of negative. It's not automatically sign extending it. And I thought this would be a good time to discuss when we use inferred multiplies and when we use multiply IP cores. And in this case, I have been trying to use the inferred multiply, but it's just not giving me the results that I want. When this number is signed, then it doesn't come out. Or when this number is negative, this doesn't come out as a negative number. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the IP core to instantiate a multiply instead. And if you can't get it to infer what you want, if using a multiply doesn't work, then the other option is to use one of the base IP cores. And in fact, I was taught to only use these. I only started using the infer multiply symbols later on in my career. So if we go to multiply, and this will give me control over how my multiply behaves. And I don't have to infer it. I can just put in these numbers and it'll give me a multiply IP call. So I'm going to put in my first number is going to be a 29 bit signed number. My second number is going to be a 16 bit unsigned number. And I'm going to choose zero pipeline stages. What that means is that it is not registered at all. It's completely combinatorial. And the reason why I'm choosing that is because this output is going to be on the same AXI bus. I'm going to be using the same AXI bus ready timing. If I wanted to register this, I would have to put in a buffer of some sort, a skid buffer, in order to maintain the AXI timing on the interface. I suspect I can get away with doing this multiply without doing that. So I'm going to do that now. Um, I'm going to call this window multiplier. And I'm going to use a lot. Let me just see if I switch to malt, it's going to give me two. I'm going to use a malt because I have those in excess. Um, and so it would be better to use a malt. There we go. And then the output width is going to be 45. Great. So this way you have much more control over the hardware and the way that the multiply is inferred in the logic. So now if I go here to my IP cores, I can, there's my multiplier, and then I'm going to look at the instantiation template. VEO is Verilog. And then I'm going to copy the instantiation template into my Ethernet. So now instead of this guy, like this, I'm going to be able to uh, put in window multiplier underscore I here. And put in my signals. So then mic data is going to be the signed first input. Window out zero down to that guy is going to be the second input. And full scale is going to be the third output. And that way, I'm just going to comment this out. Not like that. I am like so in Python mode right now. And that is how I am going to use a multiplier IP core in order to do a multiplication of two singles signals instead of inferring a multiply. And this is actually a really good technique. It's a bit more work to do, but it gives you much more finer control over how the hardware is going to be implemented inside the FPGA itself. And that's really good. When I started 
uh, programming in VHDL, this is what I was taught. I was taught to infer multiplier, to not infer, to instantiate manually multipliers every time I needed to use a multiply. And so, and this is a really good technique to use. Uh, because you can't always rely on the tool to be able to do the job for you. It might not sign extend the way you want it to. Even when I put signed here, this time around it didn't. And I think it's because I am bit slicing it. And I think it's not looking at the bit sliced version of window out. I think it's looking at the full version of window out. And so it's, pad, it's sign extending with the wrong data. So I'll be showing you the rest of this code in a future video. And I will see you soon. Bye.